Hi guys, it's Andrew here from East Made Wood Splitters today. Uh, we're going to take a look at our conveyors. We had a request from someone to uh, to do a video on our conveyors the other day. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see or what you'd like to see us do, um, by all means drop them in the comments. Uh, I'll do my best to uh, to accommodate you and show you, show you what we've got here. Um, so anyways, this is our STK24 conveyor. This is the longer version of our conveyors. It's 24 feet long. The, uh, the left height tunnel is about 14 feet. You can typically get a tandem or triaxle dump truck underneath the Grizzly. Uh, the Grizzly's on the end of it. It folds up, it's not on chains or not. It, it unfolds and there's, a, there's good spacing in between, in between everything there to, uh, to get all the dirt and debris out. A lot of guys will even just load the conveyor with the, uh, with the skid steer and then the, uh, the Grizzly will screen it before, it before it actually hits the conveyor. Uh, just really handy, keeps a lot of dirt and debris out of there. Uh, these are powered with a six and a half horsepower Honda. It's a GX200, so it's a commercial grade Honda. It just drives a small hydraulic pump. Uh, everything on the machine's hydraulic. Uh, the hydraulic drive at the very top of the machine, there's no chains, linkages, love joys, anything along those lines is a direct drive. Uh, there is a shear pin in it, so in the event that it does get jammed up, uh, it should break the shear pin. It actually should. Go over the go over the relief valve on the uh, on the actual pump itself, so you shouldn't really ever break a shear pin on it. Uh, the other nice thing about it too is if you do get something jammed up in it, because at some point you likely will. Um, not so much if you have the Grizzly on it, just because it gets the wood away from it. But if for some reason you don't have the Grizzly on the end of it, uh, you can pick something off the top of the pile and have it come up, or have something jam in the bottom of it, uh, so it will run backwards in that in that event. Uh, which is really nice. A lot of these conveyors, they only run one way, so um, you get something jammed up here. It's jammed up, and then you're down there with a chainsaw cutting it out. Uh, they also have a hydraulic lift on them. The hydraulic lift's really nice. It uh, it makes it nice and easy. It's powered both ways, which is uh, which is a big bonus. A lot of them don't power it down. They just hydraulic down or like just float down. Um, so the problem with that isn't normally when it's when it's warm out like this and the hydraulic oil is cool enough that it'll drop but if it's just gravity down in the winter time and you want to get going in the morning it's uh, you're gonna be a wait, waiting on it a wee bit to get it down the oil's pretty thick so uh, we hydraulic down just just for that reason um, the other nice thing is that it has uh, it has locking pins in it too so when you put it up you can rest it on the legs and then it sits it sits on the legs and then not on the hydraulic cylinder a lot of these will actually run uh, it's just a hydraulic cylinder holding it up, so we, that pressure is always on the seals and the cylinder. And over time, it's going to leak down uh, and and give you some problems that way. Uh, the other nice thing too is if you look at the uh, look at the valves and everything in the uh, lines, especially going up the conveyor. A lot of companies will run rubber lines going up the conveyor, and again, after time, uh, rubber lines and mountains like that will will eventually wear through. Uh, what we have is we have stainless steel lines, so they won't have a rust. They're a really hard, tough line, um, so they, they should pretty well last you forever. Uh, the uh, the conveyor itself will run just on an idle. It doesn't need to run uh, uh, really any any speed at all. You can adjust the speed of the conveyor with the throttle on the engine. Um, like I said, it can just run just off an idle too. Um, we don't. Uh, a lot of people ask us about pivoting wheels on these. Uh, we don't do pivoting wheels on them just because by the time you get by the time you get a big enough pile that you got to pivot the wheels, uh, the wood's normally at the tires anyways. You can't really pivot them. Um, and so there's not, I haven't really seen a big advantage of it uh, in, in my, in the time that I've seen it done or I don't know any that actually has wheels that pivot that actually use it on, uh, on a regular occasion. Um, Pivoting wheels would work really nice if uh, maybe you were loading uh, IBC totes or bags or something of that matter. But by the time you pivot the wheels on the conveyor, push it over, you've probably already got the tote moved or the bag moved for that matter. So there's really not a huge, huge advantage to that. Um, the other nice thing about this too is that it's a chain conveyor. Um, it's an 81X chain that runs up it, so it's the same as what you'd see on the live deck of a large processor. Uh, we run a two inch paddle on them, so it's a positive drive all the way up there. Uh, if you get into uh, a lot of, uh, if you're running on a dirty day or in the weather or whatever, uh, it drives the wood up and it pulls it up. 
And the other thing too is the actual drives on it, um, compared to a belt, it uh, it's a positive drive, so it goes around the cog on the on the uh, on the chain shaft there um, on the sprocket, and it's it's a positive drive. And uh, the chain itself actually rides on the bed of the conveyor, uh, or the ro rides on the rollers instead of on the bed. Um, so it isn't like a true drag chain; it actually runs on the rollers. Um, you just get a lot longer life if you have the chain actually dragging on the on the conveyor you'll find that it's going to wear out it, it'll wear a groove in it and then you'll be you'll be fixing it where with our system it just runs on the rollers a lot of guys will end up putting uh, chain oil or bar oil on the uh, on the rollers every so often just to uh just to keep them lubricated uh i think that's uh i think that's pretty well about it guys uh i guess i get a couple of guys ask about towing them too uh, we actually tow these things all over the country like if you see us on the road uh, we actually hook this behind my dodge and that's how we pull it and then that way it just takes up so much room on a trailer we actually uh, tow it ourselves uh, so they pull really good uh, the only really maintenance points on them is just lubricating the chain every once in a while and then there's a couple of uh, zerk fittings on the bearings there's four bearings two on the bottom two on the top um, so in terms of maintenance it, it's pretty low maintenance uh, pretty easy running thing and you can run these with anything too like if you just have a, uh, a normal splitter this is really going to help you. It's going to get the wood away from you regardless. And then you can run this behind pretty well any any processor too. It's it's a self-contained unit, so you don't need the extra the extra motor in there too. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, if you have any questions, by all means, give me a call. Uh, my cell phone number is 613-812-3213. Uh, you can reach me there pretty well anytime. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Facebook and uh like us on Instagram. Thanks a lot, guys.